Hey everyone, welcome back to the Vectra AI podcast. If you're new to the podcast, this is a series where we in the product team talk about the latest threat, product innovation, and topics that we are passionate about. I'm Tiff, product marketer at Vectra AI. Today I'm sitting down with John, principal product manager at Vectra AI, to talk about identity threat detection and response, a- aka ITDR. So ITDR is an evolving space where the industry and many organizations actually have um, different definition of what it does and what it means. And so we are going to walk through three questions that we got a lot from customers today based on um, our experience in securing customers' identities for the past 10 years. So let's let's start. Um, John, why don't we start with why is defending against identity attacks so hard? Okay, so this is a a, a real kind of quick and easy one to to say is, and that's ultimately there is a massive shift in what attackers are doing. Um, for years, uh, organizations, you know, were afraid of malware, afraid of attackers hacking in. The truth is that modern attackers, you know, the ransomware groups that are out there, the APT groups that are out there, they are not hacking in. They are just logging in. It used to be that credentials were this thing that we in security would hold on the inside. And you know the only way to get it was an attacker had to break through a firewall and come into a network. That's not the case now. Uh, mm. Human, non-human identities, cloud network identities, all these identities are now accessible outside of a network environment because they're related to the interactions we have with the cloud, with even how we access the network today. And that shift to how we as businesses operate relates to now the shift in how attackers operate. And so they are not hacking in, they're logging in. And that's what's making it so much harder to defend and and kind of fight these because it's a difference in attacker mindset. Yeah, 100%. And especially non-human identity create a lot of blind spots for organizations as well. Um, So it's, it's been challenging. So which leads me to the second question, what is ITDR? Yeah, so, you know, we, there's always this acronym word jumble that that we have in the security yeah. space. And if you look this up, you'll get a few different responses. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this this graphic, I think, is probably the the best kind of view that we could come up with to to explain what's going on here. And the idea of ITDR that that is this idea that you have IM, you have MFA, you have PAM, you have these other things that are really prevention focused. Mm-hmm. But the problem with those things ultimately is that they leave gaps. Um, mm. And the what ITDR, just like what EDR and NDR and CDR are, is the thing that is the second and third layer, the layers that come after prevention that mm. fill in the gaps. Because there's no, you know, there's a dream of zero trust. There's this dream of everything being perfectly configured. But perfect configuration is just frankly not a possibility. There's always going to be gaps, always going to be small cracks. And that's where detection really comes into play. Um, mm-hmm. It's all about really doing that, stopping that attack if it gets through. Yeah. In terms of kind of what you see in the market, if you look at kind of the, mm-hmm. the solutions that are out there, there has been a kind of a growing of a, a bifurcation, even though it's called identity detection and response, if mm-hmm. you're, got to be careful and look and really scrutinize what these different solutions are offering. Some are very focused on posture, which yeah. is monitoring and analyzing your configurations, your deployment, static data in your environment to focus on how attackers might get in and, and give you that context. Yeah. The other area is the the post-compromise one, which is really that second and third layer that, that kind yeah. of was on that slide that's really giving you that fallback. And yeah. so it's important for anyone that's looking at these to consider what is more important, that the attacker might get in or that you are kind of working at that marginal increase in gain to try to close posture gaps. It's a very important thing to think of what is going to give the most maximum benefit. Um, yeah. And, you know, yeah. Well, what are your thoughts on this, Tiff? Because you're also talking to a lot of folks. Yeah, I think it's important because we we talked about insider threat in another podcast and it's just what if they're already in and there are many different ways attacker can get in and they only need to be successful one time to be in your environment. And we also know that posture takes a long time to configure right and it can never be 100%. So it's also 
whether security teams should also invest in post compromise focus ITDR so that they can have a balanced approach because sometimes a lot of the native tools might already have the the posture um, part and it's all about maximizing the use of that too making sure like all of your MFA is properly enabled, but then we know that attackers can also bypass them. So having both or even arguably prioritizing post-compromise focus ITDR first is, is important. Fully agree, fully agree. Yeah, and, and we also talked about um, the breadth and depth detection as well. So security team really need to battle test it um, to see whether like, everyone that claims that they can detect the same attack, can they really do it in, in a red team or offensive security setting? So, which leads to the first question on what are the important criteria that we think security teams should should consider when they're evaluating an ITDR solution? Yeah, and I and I think that point you made about kind of red teaming is, is critical. You red team when you evaluate an EDR, you red team when you evaluate an NDR, there's no reason you shouldn't be red teaming when you're evaluating an ITDR. It's all about that detection yeah. response. That's really the critical thing. Okay. And this is why, you know, and this leads to kind of the, the criteria that we recommend for evaluating an ITDR. Mm -hmm. And it's really three things. It's coverage, that there's coverage there that allows you to reduce exposure. So this is post compromise threat detection, detection of attacker behaviors, not just like UABA. UABA is a failed solution. There's a reason why this isn't called UABA. So you can't rely on a legacy solution that's focused there. Mm. The second thing is clarity that removes latency. So you need something that's going to be able to prioritize and mm. really effectively highlight something that is a threat uh, and doing that in an integrated and correlated way. Because what we've kind of been talking about as you know, if you look at some of our other podcasts is identities and, and environments overall are not just one thing. They're multiple domains and you have to have signal that's correlated across them. It's same thing for ITDR as it is for, for any other solution. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the last thing is is control, you know, being able to control that maximizes your talent. So you can't have teams that are jumping between different solutions that are trying to come up and reinvent the wheel of how to search through data. So investigation and context needs to be really accessible and the means to take a responsive action absolutely as easy as possible for teams to, to access. Yeah, I really like the correlated point that you talked about because often a lot of security teams actually have silo tools for a different attack surface or different types of identities, which it's very hard to like give the whole picture because imagine if you have a security camera in your house and you only scan the living room you won't be able to see the attacker going into the corridor and going to a bedroom and doing like stealing stuff there right so um yeah i think the correlation and the integrated visibility is really important here um right and with that um uh, if you want to know more we actually recently published a research report on it uh, ITDR requirement where we walk through why identity is such a new parameter, why is it so hard these days, and what are the different types of identity solution out there? What's the difference between what we what John mentioned, that posture focus and also a post compromise detection and response approach? Um, what detailing of the criteria of what is needed in an ITDR solution and some recommendation on um, strengthening your identity security. Um, so with that, I'm going to wrap up this episode. And if you haven't checked out all of the other podcasts, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. And with that, thanks so much again, John, for having this chat with me on ITDR. We're both very passionate about that. Um, and hope to see everyone in the next one. Bye. Bye.